Hello everyone, today I want to talk about a character that I feel like has been kind of the talk of the town recently as in putting up some good results here in Season 3, and that is of course going to be Milia. Now Milia is a character that for a while has always been kind of considered to be, you know, a lower tier character, everyone always wanted her to be buffed and all of that. And patch after patch, they would buff the character, and she wouldn't really go anywhere. She would always end up on like the lower to maybe middle of the, the pack kind of character. But here in Season 3, I think she is quite a strong character, and we've been seeing some good results from her. And I want to talk about that now. I feel like now is the good time to talk about this character and why we probably need to evaluate her differently in Season 3. So very recently, we've been seeing this character doing very well. Uh, in Offline, we've had, over at UFA, we had Sarani doing very well with this character, beating some of, honestly, the very best players in the scene with Milia. Really, I think, just showing what the character is capable of. And over even in NA, with our online scene, we've been seeing players like Rat and just a couple of other Milia players doing really well in, in some of our online tournaments like TNS and whatnot. So I feel like this is kind of the point where we've seen the best results from Milia players and I think it just goes to show how capable this character is in this version in particular and I think there's a couple of reasons for that. So previously in the past I felt like this character did not blend with the system mechanics very well and she herself had pretty glaring character flaws and you know if you look at the launch version of this character she was not very good. And then if you look at like, you know, a patch or two ago, she was like a mid tier or whatever, but she still had those issues of like, she just didn't really feel like she fit the game. I think they have fixed that finally. I think she finally fits into the system mechanics of the game quite well. And I think it does wonders for her. So let's talk about why I think those things have changed. So first of all, I think the biggest thing about Milia is, and I've, I've actually thought this for a while now, her neutral is actually pretty good. Obviously she's a fast character, right? She has great movement speed, that type of thing. And just having fast movement speed forces the opponent to play more preemptively against you. And when someone has to play preemptively, that means they have to play more risky. Uh, Milia is too fast to try to react to her movements. Her air options are too good to be able to just perfectly react to them all the time. You know, she has options like Capel to be able to mix up her air movement. She has a faster than normal air dash. And of course, she also has two air dashes, which helps her mix up that type of thing. And all of the things combined just mean you have to play very preemptive against this character, which is a strong quality to have in a character. You know, we look at Chip, we look at Giovanna, they have those same qualities, and those are also very strong characters. Her buttons are also very good in the context of how this character plays neutral. Namely, her 2K, I think, is actually a very strong normal, and it always has been. The reason why this was not as important is because of the things surrounding her 2k, I suppose. So before, Milia's 2d, for example, was very unsafe. It was actually punishable by reversals. So if you blocked Milia doing run-up 2k 2d, if you had a good reversal, either a DP or like a relatively big super, you could literally just mash super as soon as you block 2d and punish her on block. She didn't have cancel options that were safe or gaplets, and the 2D itself was punishable. So every time Milia would do run up 2k 2D, it actually ended up being way more committal than it should be for this type of option. Now, they fixed that in a number of ways. First of all, her 2k 2D is just not punishable anymore, not by a super at least. Characters like Ram or Nago can't just mash super after blocking 2D anymore. And on top of that, they gave her a gapless cancel option in Lust Shaker. So Lush Shaker is now gapless, and this is only minus 5 on block, and pushes her at a very good range for a character like her. She's actually so far after this type of string that she's not even in her own S button range. So because of this, you're forced to kind of play a very weird RPS where you have to deal with her doing stuff like, you know, 2k 2d into Lush Shaker and then doing air dash jh. You have to deal with stuff like that into 6p or backdash. So she has a very strong button paired with her fast movement speed. And on block, it's not even a bad situation. I would say it's a good situation in most matchups for her. And I think that is a very big difference in how she used to be. On top of that, she has other good buttons as well. Of course, she has Far Slash, which is a 9 frame startup at this point. Uh, on launch, I believe this move is 10 or 11 frames, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, giving her just a very fast with punish tool, which is very nice. The other thing about a move like this is another change that she got over time is that they made S-Disc safer on block than it used to be. 
So it, it used to be a situation where doing this was pretty punishable against most characters. I know as Ram, I could literally just mash far slash. And in most cases, it would be a counter hit punish because Estus is projectile. Projectiles are counter hit recovery in this game. That isn't the case anymore. It's actually pretty hard for a lot of characters to punish this unless like, you know, maybe they ID it or something, which is pretty hard to do consistently. Not only does she just have a fast poke in far slash, she has a poke that gives her decent reward. Not a great reward, but decent reward, right? You know, if she hits you with this, she can run up and actually get like a meaty 2k or a meaty close slash or something, which is a very big deal. And on block, it's not like the highest committal frame trap option. It's still not great. I wouldn't call it a great cancel option, but it is far better than it used to be. The other thing about this move is that it also has pretty high reward on counter hit by doing something like this into, you know, whatever the combo would be. I don't play Vilea, so I don't know the combo. But she gets actual meaningful reward from this. She can actually get a wall break or a knockdown into dis OP or something like that. It is very valuable from a button this fast. So she has a pretty low committal normal with decent options on normal hit, on block, and pretty high reward on counter hit. So between 2k and far slash and just her movement speed and her air options, those things I think are plenty enough for her to play neutral with to where I would say her neutral is fairly strong in the current situation of the game and is pretty low committal. Which is very nice for a character like her because one of her main downsides is that she has low health. Having to put yourself in bad spots is very dangerous. And, you know, they've done all sorts of things like Capel has been changed over time to where she gets much more reward off of it than she used to. All those types of things do a lot for the character for her neutral to feel so much more oppressive and harder to deal with. You know, if you do have to guess on the character, she has pretty rewarding things now. And always, you know, always her 2k2d was pretty rewarding on hit. She gets this Oki, of course. The fact that she has good reward from these low risk options now is so much different than what it used to be, where she had high risk on low reward options. And they've, they've kind of evened that out a bit. Very different situation going on with this character than how she used to be. The next big change that has happened for Milia, and this is specifically in season three, is how she blends with system mechanics, in my opinion. With Milia, she is a character that wants to snowball you, right? She wants to get 2k2d into this Oki and then run that Disoki until you die. And the problem with that before was that I don't think she worked well with the ball break mechanic because either sometimes she would get a type of hit that doesn't go into Disoki, or even if she did get Disoki, the hit would eventually take you to the wall and the ball would break. And her post wall break Oki was never like crazy. It was good, right? Like she could do things, but it, it wasn't the same as Disoki. It's not, you know, an uninteractive, high low, that type of thing. This version of the game, however, introduces Wild Assault. And Wild Assault allows you to get a hard knockdown on Wall Break without having to spend meter. The reason why I think this is particularly relevant is because you don't have to spend your tension to get the hard knockdown on Wall Break anymore, which means when you are waking up from the hard knockdown, you have to deal with Milia, who has 50 meter, who can just do TK Bad Moon or, you know, delay 2S or go for a throw or go for any of the other mix of options that she used to. The fact that she has that immediate unreactable high low 50 50 now more consistently because she doesn't have to spend the meter to do uh, a wall break anymore i think is such a significant change to her general game flow i i feel like it just makes her so much better at snowballing than she used to be there's no longer that weird situation in the match where she wall breaks and now it's like okay how do i get back into this okay i gotta do normal pressure I gotta do something kind of weird or gimmicky maybe to open up my opponent. No, now she just usually will have 50 meter after a wild assault wall, wall break and then run a 50-50. And if that 50-50 she hits you, she probably kills you. Because of this, I think the game flow change for this character has changed almost completely and it makes her so much more threatening because she can more consistently establish this snowball effect. Alongside the changes, the positive bonus. You know, Millie is a character where her downside is, of course, that she has low health. Positive bonus helps you with that because when you have positive bonus, you have a defense modifier increase and you now gain your burst gauge back while in positive bonus. And having a burst as a low health character is very, very valuable because it helps you not get oops as much as you would originally. Milia being able to drain burst gauge as consistently as she can now because of Wild Assault is very relevant because she's a character who does a lot of hits in her combos. She's a character who relatively does less damage to people. So you would have more opportunities to get your burst gauge back against this character. So previously you would burst almost immediately upon getting hit because the idea was you would probably get it back very soon. You, you don't get that anymore from her because she's going to be comboing into Wild Assault. She's going to be breaking the wall with Wild Assault. You're not going to have burst available as often as you would against her. 
So she has more situations where you're guessing for game and you don't have burst anymore. Those things I think are very significant to her general game flow and I don't think they can be understated to how they've changed the character overall. At this point in how she's been changed and how other characters have been changed because I think another thing relevant to season three is that a lot of other characters around Milia have have changed which means that matchups have changed. I think her matchup spread is overall like pretty fair for this type of character. Obviously, she still has some losing matchups uh, and the top tiers are still the top tiers, right? Like I'm not in any way trying to imply that Milia is the power level of Havoc Chaos and Nago and that type of thing. I think her matchup spread now is so much more better off than it used to be where I feel like back in the day, she had consistency issues where, you know, any given matchup, she might be able to win, but are you going to be able to win like a, a long tournament against top level players in matchups that are that lopsided? You're not going to have a good chance, right? Nowadays, I feel like her matchup spread and just her general character power level makes it so much more practical to do deep runs and tournament brackets with this character, which is ultimately what you're looking for. You want to be able to perform consistently with your character. And I think she kind of has that going for her. But it just goes to show how much I think this character has actually changed. It's just been a very slow process. But if you add up every little thing they've done for this character from the launch of Shrive to now in Season 3, I think she finally fits into the game. And I really don't think she needs any more buffs. If anything, the biggest thing you could do for this character is nerf the characters above her. I think she's in a perfectly fine spot now. Of course, that is just my opinion. I would love to know what you over on YouTube think. Let me know down in the comments below. Do you think this character is good now? Do you think she's in a fine spot? Let me know what you think. If you enjoyed the video, please consider dropping a like and subbing to the channel. It would really help me out and I greatly appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one.